Benign paroxysmal positional vertigo is an amazing condition. The reason why is when you see a patient with vertigo, you can perform a manoeuvre which will make the diagnosis, and then you can perform another manoeuvre which will fix them. When doing the Dix Hall pipe manoeuvre, I always go through with the patient what I'm about to do. I do this regularly, but to a patient this is something that's very new and it can be a little bit scary for them. Something I find useful is for the patient to fold their arms before I do the Dix Hall pipe manoeuvre. The patient's head is turned 45 degrees towards me. They are then lowered backwards so that their head is extended about 20 degrees over the back of the couch. If a patient has benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, you will often see their nystagmus within 20 to 30 seconds. Occasionally, the nystagmus will be seen up to a minute after their head has been extended. In view of this, if you really do feel that there's a strong history that would be suggestive of benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, it is often worthwhile holding the head back in the extended position for up to a minute. When lowering the patient back, if they do have benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, they can find this very traumatic. If they do find it traumatic, they can close their eyes very tightly. This makes it very difficult to assess any eye movements. To stop patients from closing their eyes, I explain to them that it's very important that they keep their eyes open. Sometimes I ask patients to look at my nose whilst I lower their head down. It is important to perform the Dix Hall pipe manoeuvre with the head both in the left and right lateral positions. I usually perform the Dix Hall pipe manoeuvre on the side that is asymptomatic first. The Epley manoeuvre is the most well established and it's the test that's been proven to be successful in this condition. The first part of the Epley manoeuvre is essentially performing the Dix Hallpipe manoeuvre. 